Today I want to do something different. I know that I usually discuss some biological concept, but I want to instead focus on a novel topic for my channel, logical fallacies. I haven't yet decided if it's something I want to pursue in depth, so leave your thoughts on that in the comment section below please. The first fallacious argument I want to look at is called guilt by association or the association fallacy. Now in many arguments, people use the concept to shut down thoughtful discussion, which I find very annoying. Thus, this video will be something of a public service announcement. So what is guilt by association? Guilt by association is when person 1 links the ideology of person 2 to some third person, often person 3 has committed some heinous deed, and person 1 then proclaims that person 2's ideology is wrong because person 3 was a moral monster. Let us take an example to clarify. Godwin's law is the idea that as a conversation progresses, the likelihood that Nazis are mentioned grows. Often when theists and atheists are arguing about the validity of Christianity, one party or the other, I've seen both do it, will make a proclamation about Adolf Hitler's religious beliefs or the lack thereof. Atheists will say that Hitler was a Christian, and Christians will say Hitler was an atheist. Really, what religious or non-religious beliefs Hitler held are irrelevant because the atrocities he committed say nothing about the veracity of his beliefs. God could either exist or not exist totally independent of the Holocaust. You can find historical examples of atheists who've killed people and Christians who've killed people. But so what? If we're talking about whether an ideology is true, then how many people have been killed by it is a non-argument. Another example is associating acceptance of evolution with support of social Darwinism and Nazism. The Answers in Genesis page, The Evolutionizing of a Culture, even goes so far as to present a graphic that shows that those who accept evolution also endorse humanism, pornography, homosexual behavior, abortion, family breakup, euthanasia, and racism. What's funny about this is that there's nothing wrong with humanism or homosexuality. The monthly consumption of pornography by Christians is almost the exact same amount as the national average, which is 64%, according to a survey by the Maryland-based Proven Men Ministries. With regard to abortion, the Bible says in Genesis 2-7, quote, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being, close quote. In other words, a person isn't a person until they start breathing. Then, in Numbers 5:11 through 31, the Bible explains how a priest can force a woman to miscarry, i.e., carries out an abortion, if the woman is thought to have been unfaithful to her husband. For family breakup, evangelical Christians have been consistently found to have higher likelihoods of divorce than other Christians or even non-religious people. Ironic that those who are so strongly pro-family are less likely to make strong families. For euthanasia, it seems true that religious people are less likely to accept it. A 2015 survey in Britain showed that 8% of Anglicans, 12% of Methodists, 7% of Church of Scotland, 19% of other Protestants, 16% of Roman Catholics, and 25% of other non-Protestants, including Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, and Seventh-day Adventists, are anti-euthanasia, whereas only 1% of atheists and 4% of agnostics are anti-euthanasia. 5% declined to answer. In America, Christians are broadly against euthanasia. Whether or not you think euthanasia is okay is your opinion, I'm just pointing out statistics. Lastly, Christians have historically used the Bible to both support and attack racism, so this seems to just be a matter of interpretation. This whole digression exists to show that Christianity doesn't imply the moral high ground. It's just as human as the people who invented it and all the rest of us. Back to evolution leading to social Darwinism. This erroneous reasoning comes from a lack of understanding of what the definition of evolution is, which is change in allele frequencies in a population from generation to generation, versus what the definition of social Darwinism is. Social Darwinism is defined as the theory that individuals, groups, and peoples are subject to the same Darwinian laws of natural selection as plants and animals. Of course, we would be subjected to natural selection if technology hadn't allowed us to mitigate the effects of selective pressures. In most countries, people are not constantly battling against the environment and other animals for survival. 
And in countries where acceptance of evolution is high, like Iceland, Sweden, Denmark, and France, social Darwinism doesn't exist. Therefore, accepting evolution again doesn't lead to social Darwinism. YouTuber Rationality Rules destroyed the argument that evolution leads to social Darwinism in his video, Atheism Leads to Social Darwinism, debunked. Link in the description below. On the other hand, if we're talking about whether an ideology is beneficial to a society, not whether it is true, then we can include atrocities. But more important than whether someone who ascribes to some ideology has committed atrocities is whether that person has committed atrocities in the name of that ideology. Remember that correlation doesn't imply causation. A person who happens to be a, say, Hindu who commits murder is different from a person who commits murder in the name of Hinduism. What people in arguments often do is assume that since a bad person held some particular ideology, that ideology is the reason for that person being bad. Conservative political commentator Dinesh D'Souza often makes this fallacy when talking about Joseph Stalin. Sure, Stalin was an atheist, but were millions of people in this country killed because of his atheism? No. Possible political rivals, criminals, and anyone deemed anti-Soviet were killed. The political class of people called kulaks, who were high-income farmers, was dismantled, and millions died from starvation. All in all, the reason for so many deaths in the USSR was political totalitarianism, not atheism. To assert that atheism killed millions of people because the person in charge was an atheist is palpably deceptive. Now, let's spend a moment on this starvation issue. Millions died because Stalin's head of agriculture, named Trofim Lysenko, believed that natural selection was false, throwing Darwinian evolution out the window, and believed that Lamarckism was true. Under this assumption, he had the farmers plant all the crops close together because he believed the crops would develop communist ideals and share nutrients equally. Of course, crops can't think, so they died from lack of nutrients. Therefore, even though Lysenko was an atheist, he rejected evolution putting to rest the idea that atheism necessitates evolution. YouTuber King Crocoduck explains Lysenkoism and its modern proponents in his video, The New Lysenkoists. Now, I'm going to kick the video over to my friend Tony Hackenslash, link to his blog in the description below, so he can explain the underlying cause of these atrocities. Steven Weinberg said, All else being equal, good people tend to do good things and bad people tend to do bad things. But to get good people to do bad things, that takes religion. He was wrong about this, though, for several reasons. First, there really isn't any such thing as a good or a bad person. There are only actions that we, as moral agents, deem to be good or bad. And people who can be seen to display a general propensity one way or the other or to entirely disengage from the moral contract for whatever reason. Secondly, and this is the important one, the real problem is blind adherence to doctrinal imperatives. Religion's only a subset of this, albeit the noisiest and most ubiquitous. Stalinism, Nazism, ISIS, McCarthyism, the various depredations of Christianity and Islam, all fall under the same banner, doctrinal imperatives that must be adhered to without question. Atheism's neither one of these, nor does it contain any, because it's a simple privative denoting the non-acceptance of a specific class of truth claim with regard to the existence of a specific class of entity. There's no logical route from atheism to the kind of atrocities that this Stalin et al trope is supposed to bring to mind. We have to look elsewhere for motivation, and when we do, we always find exactly the same kind of doctrinal imperatives that are to be found in religion, and which ultimately underpin the behaviour of all extremists. Thanks, Tony. To spell out the final fatal argument for why guilt by association is fallacious, let's apply the fallacy to physical appearance rather than ideological adherence. Both Hitler and Stalin had millions of people killed, and both Hitler and Stalin had mustaches. Therefore, having a mustache necessitates the killing of millions. Absurd, right? Well, that's the kind of argument you make with guilt by association. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.